Hi, welcome to the Andrew Buckle video tutorial on Affinity Photo and filters. Filters in this case, Unsharp Mask, one of the most oddest named filters. However, it is quite effective in a number of ways. So I'm just going to quickly go through. Here's see what I'm doing here with Unsharp Mask. You can do with type. You can see as I change the threshold, you can see, obviously, set it to 100%. There's no change at all. However, you just reduce it down so you can see there, then suddenly you will notice there is a change. If I reduce the radius, there's nothing, but you can increase the radius, obviously the radius of the pixels, and also the actual factor itself. So if you reduce the factor, you can put the factor up to the max, and actually you can put it even further than that, of course. You can extend the radius even further, you can see it just goes out more and more as you expand out there, or just reduce it down, just controlling it, just by using the cursor. It's just as easy, of course, to control it here. And you can always set values greater than that in there. But I'm just going to quickly cancel it and show you where the filter is. So filters, then go to sharpen and unsharp mask. I must admit, it's not a filter that I use all the time, but it has its uses. So unsharp mask, and you can see there. Now, of course, it's probably best not to extend it too far, unless you want that sort of white going around there. So you can just reduce it down to a reasonable level so you can sharpen it, but not get that probably slightly horrible white. And you can reduce that down as well. And you can always modify the threshold to the point where you think, you know what, that's ruining the picture. I think that looks quite nice. That's really sharpen that up. Click apply. Very subtle, but it's one of those effects. Now what you can do, I'm just gonna go to another effect image. Go to filters, sharpen, and of course, as with all these filters, you can combine them with others. You can also use them in view and studio and macros, which are quite useful, so you can combine them and also replay them each and every time. So just go there, unsharp mask, and then change the threshold. And you can see there, it just really brightens up. So for some of these more abstract designs, it's actually quite effective. You can create some very interesting sort of effects. And you can again modify the threshold. You can just really, so it may be not so great for some images. Some images it is. I'm just gonna increase it. And again, you can still increase it up to that. You can go too far, I think. I think it's a certain point where it suddenly loses its effectiveness. So apply. And you can really see that really does sharpen that up. Really, and that's, for me, quite nice. I quite like that effect. So that sort of blurry, smeary effect. However, well, I'm just going to go to another one. And you've got here, so you've got some trees, you've got various things. So filters, distort, sharpen, I mean, unsharp mask. And even with, there, it actually is quite reasonable, especially since you've got quite a white background anyway. It doesn't really make much difference adding any more white to it. You can change that. You can really see that sharpens that up. which may be what you want. However, of course, with all these filters, what you can do, you can always apply them. So you can just go, let's go to another image here, filters. Go to filters and sharpen, unsharp mask. You can see again, you get this. Actually, I think this is quite nice with this. With, like I say, with abstract designs, I think it's quite effective. So you can really brighten those up. Look at that, that really sharpens. Now, what you can also do, of course, is you can go to a layer and you can go to fade unsharp mask. <laughs> so always get me a bit of a mouthful, unsharp mask. Now, if you just reduce it, you can go like that, have it 100%, or maybe reduce it down maybe to 50%. And you can also use blending modes. So you can run through there and you can go to difference, hard, pin light, saturation, hue, lighten, and so on, so on. So you can run through whole range of different uh, difference. You end up getting that, like that edge feature in Photoshop. So you can create that. And of course, what you can do, you can always go back to the filter because you can always repeat it. So repeat, and you can get this really intense, bright thing. And of course, what you can do, you can always go to a layer menu. Again, fade, unsharp mask. And you can always use normal, but you can always use difference or overlay. You can run through that. And again, what you can do, 
apply. You can apply them as a macro. So you can always just store that, just go to view and down to studio and macro, just create a quick macro with all these different unsharp masks, as well as maybe some other filters as well, and then just apply them there. And you can see you can create some very unusual designs. So I'm just gonna move that back to there. What you can also do, I'm just gonna move that slightly. You can also use selections. You don't have to apply it to the whole thing. Maybe you just want it for that central bit. You suddenly think, you know what, that bit, or something else. You can use other selections here, of course. Whole range of different selections. So you can go for there, select highlights, and so on, so on, or mid-tones. Then what you can do, go there, do sharpen, unsharp mask. I always go to distort. I use distort more often than not, so I have a tendency just to go to distort. I think everything is in distort. Personally, I've never understood why they haven't just created a filters menu that just has everything in, in alphabetical order, and that will just make it so much easier to find it. Because I know what it is, unsharp mask, Sometimes the category you think, is it in there or is it in the other one? So you can see, you can reduce just a, not any effect applied to the rest. You can just change the threshold so you can get a very intense, unsharp mask there. And that's that. Select. What you can also do, you can use channels. You can find channels via view and studio and just go there, channels up to there. And what you can do, just go to the red and you can go to filter, and you can do, obviously just apply unsharp mask to that, you see the effect there. And now, I'm not gonna do it to all the others, but you could, of course, run through all the other channels as well, select the green, the blue, apply different settings maybe, and then just go back to the, and what you've got now is an unsharp mask applied just to the red part of this image. So you can make that more intense, change that, tweak that, which I think is quite nice as well. There, let's just go to, now if you go to say like a standard image, if you go to filters and down to sharpen, unsharp mask, trouble is what happens is you get this sort of, these white, this white, which you maybe you don't want. So obviously reduce down the radius to a point where you can not see it. I think it's about there. It's sharpened things up. Mm, there's certain parts there that still, you can go get a lot of grain there, which maybe is again what you want. So you can really, you can't see much grain there, but you really push the threshold down. You can really see that. It's a very noisy image there. And again, you can always reduce the radius or go full on, which is maybe not good. And of course, again, you can always repeat and make a real new, very unusual colored design there. Now, what you can also do, of course, you can apply it with other effects, but you can also use it with other tools. So you've got here, say, like ellipse. However, with these sort of things, it's a solid object. You're not going to get much effect. It's not, it's not going to be. However, of course, as always with all these things, what you can do, you can always go to filters and you can apply effects to it, blur, etc., and then go to unsharp mask if you want to apply that tool there. Well, that was the filter effect. That's a destructive effect. Basically, you apply it, the only way you get around it is undo. What you can also do, luckily, there is a, just go over here to a layer, new life filter layer, and you can go to sharpen, and you can go to unsharp mask. You can do exactly the same as before. So you can just tweak all these settings, radius, factor. You can just push it up to a certain point where it starts to get, that's quite nice and sharp. You don't want to push it too far. Push it too far and you get that sort of crease the radius too much. Get that white around the edge. And also you can change the threshold so you can increase it so you get none of the effect or you can reduce it and you get more of the effect. And you can of course just tweak it to a certain point and you think, yeah, I think that's quite nice. And also you've got the option for blend modes. You may not want to use them, may not. Or you may want to use them. Lighten or difference. So you can go difference, which is great for if you want to create some very unusual line designs like that. And of course you can always quick, quickly increase the radius and change the factor there. And you can see obviously the lines of the design there. And of course, once you've done that, you can always invert it so you can see it in a slightly better way. However, I'm not gonna do that one. I'm just gonna go back to normal. And also I'm gonna reduce it down. Now what you can also do, of course, you can create another layer. You can always go to a layer and you can duplicate. And you can always, of course, resize. And now you've got two unsharp masks, got that unsharp mask, and you can 
modify those independently. So if you want to double click, you can say, you know what, I don't want that radius, or I do want that radius. You can increase it, reduce it, change the threshold, again, change the blending modes. And again, this is live at any point. You can always close that and always double click it to bring it back again. So you can edit it a bit more. Well, I hope you found this tutorial of interest. Always had new tutorials all the time about Photoshop, Finity Photo, Finity Designer, Finity Publisher, Illustrator, and many, many other applications. Please also subscribe to the Graphic Extras channel. Always adding virtually daily new videos. And also, please put some comments. What things do I do right? What things do I do wrong? Also, if you've got any ideas how you use this uh, obviously unsharp mask, I say one of the most unusual named filters, I think. Also, a dislike or like. Thank you much.